I've done a few videos over the years now where I've put out pots, and mainly from the kayak, but also recently from the shore. And it's a lot of fun. And from the kayak, if I'm going out fishing for the day, I will occasionally, I don't do it on a very regular basis, but, but occasionally I like to put, put a pot out or two pots or three pots out before I start fishing. And then at the end of the fishing session, before I go in, go and pull the pots. Sometimes you're lucky and you get something, crabs or, or lobster, and sometimes you're not. But when you are lucky, um, it's great, particularly if you like eating shellfish, it's great to, to get something extra than fish. And it just, it just adds another, another bit of excitement to the end of a fishing day. Likewise, from the shore, occasionally I'll wander down to the rocks and put a pot out, um, or a couple of pots out, uh, leave it for a day, or two days, or three days, depending on the weather. And, and again, it's just a huge amount of fun. Now, when I've done these videos, many of you have asked by the comments about the pots that I use. So what I thought I'd do in this video is I'll go through those pots. A couple of the pots you can still get, one of the pots you can't get. But they're, they're great pots that are suitable for kayak fishing and also suitable for shore fishing because they're, they're e e fairly easy to carry and fairly easy to store on the kayak. So we're going to look at a couple of collapsible pots that I've got and more recently I've got a non-collapsible pot which is gr great from the shore and great from the, from the kayak. Alright so first of all we'll, we'll look at the pots and then I'll show you how I set them up and uh, what I use to deploy them and also at the end how I store them on the kayak. Now when you do a search for a collapsible pot, collapsible crab or lobster pot on the internet, what tends to come up the most are these, these things, these, these round pots, barrel pots. Now these are fine for shore crabs if you want to get some hardback crabs for bait. Uh, they're fine for velvet swimming crabs. Um, but to be honest they're not definitely not suitable for uh, de a decent sized brown crab or, or, or spider crab um, and a good, good sized lobster, lobster and the reason for that is because they tend to come with hopefully you can see that small holes probably probably only about a three inch diameter hole um, so you're never going to get you're never going to get a decent sized spider crab in there. You're never going to get a decent sized brown crab in there. You you put yeah okay possibly yeah probably possibly a, a lobster, a legal sized lobster can can get in there. But the other thing is they're so flimsy for sea fishing. To, in, in my opinion, these are, would be great for the freshwater crayfish. You know, in the rivers and the canals, if um, you've got a license to do that, is to get crayfish. Perfect for that. But for sea fish in salt water, apart from getting a bit of bait, a bit of half from some shore crabs, hardback crabs for bait, they're pretty useless, to be honest with you. They don't last two minutes. Um, the zip there, see, they go in absolutely no, no time at all. The zip where you've got a little bait bag, um, they go in no time at all. So... All I use those for is if I, if I want, a, want a bit of bait or occasionally if I want to put one out for some velvet swimming crabs. Okay, so the first pot we're going to look at is the one that many of you would have seen me use many times and that's this one. This quite large collapsible pot. Now these pots, what I would call pro style. Now, the reason, I'm not saying they are as good as professional pots. Of course they're not, the, the, the pots that the professionals use. But they're pro-style in the fact that they're well-made. You've got some, some really good, tough netting. And, and they're suitable for sea fishing. And, and they last and they definitely work. They definitely catch. So, this first one, which when fo folded up, folds up to next to nothing. But then you use these tubes to keep it open, open them up, 
prop, prop them up all the way around and then it op opens up to that. Got four entrance holes, so plenty of, plenty of ways for the crabs or the lobsters to, to get in. Now the entrances are open, they're always open. Unlike let's say a commercial pot where, where if it's a top entry with a pot it is open but of course the, the crab or the lobster can't get back up out. Or you've got the soft, the soft entrance, the net. And they push through and it collapses behind and, and, the, and they can't get out. These are permanently open. So you could say, in fact, all the pots that we're gonna look at are permanently open at entrances. So you could say, well, the crab, can, the crab or lobsters just walk in and walk out. Well, it is possible, but unlikely. Now on this particular pot, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you this because you probably won't see. What, what it is, what you've got with the entrance there, there's one of the entrances there. You've got the, the lower bit here goes in further than the upper bit. So it creates like a ledge. You can, if you can imagine, if you can imagine your uh, rock climbing, you get to, the, get to the summit and there's a ledge like that. And you've got, if you want to get up onto the summit you've got to go over that ledge it's the same principle plus when the crab or lobster goes in of course it drops down to get to the bait and if they are looking for a way out i can't never be sure without putting a camera on it but i would have suspect what they will do they just keep going round and round and round looking for a way out so it's a clever design got that ledge there so it makes it dead easy to get in, but not so easy for them to for them to, to, to get out. Okay, so what I do is I just have here, I put some cord, tied some cord into the centre of the pot where I can tie a bait down. Now a lot of the times I use trimmings from fish I filleted. So, so I've still got the head and the bones with a bit of meat on the bones. And so I, I, what I do, I tie it either through the gills or, or through the eye sockets and tie it to the centre. But what I've also used, if I'm using pieces of fish, is I just make, just make with a bit of, bit of netting that I've got, I just make up a bait bag. So if, so if it's um, fillets of fish, trimmings of fish, just put a bait bag in and tie that to the to the to the center of the pot. Now, one thing I've got to say about this pot, because many of you have asked about this pot, which you can still get. Um, I'm not sure if it's exactly the same as regards the entrances, but basically it's it's the same. Where you've got four entrances, open entrances, same design, same size. But one thing to bear in mind with this pot. From the point of view of kayak fishing it is big it is 90 centimeters diameter so that's large and therefore when you're on a kayak it's not the easiest of pots to to use it's no problem to, if you've got a decent as big enough kayak it's no problem to carry it and we'll say we'll look at how i carry them later but when you put it together on a kayak because you can't stand up but I've got a system and I'm, I'm, I've worked out how to do it. But if any of you are thinking about getting one of these for a kayak, because you see me use them, please bear in mind, they are big. They do take some handling, um, but you do get used to it and you do, you do manage to do it. This one weighs, I thought it was about six pound. Actually, in fact, I've just weighed it. It weighs eight pound. So, it's got the weight there. You, I could add weight to it, but it's got enough weight. And I usually don't bother adding weight because I never put pots out either from the shore or from the kayak when, when it's rough weather. Because obviously if I'm out kayak fishing, I wouldn't be going out in rough weather. If I put them out from the shore, then um, I pick days when I know it's going to be calm so I can't, don't lose them. So with this one, I don't bother with extra weight. Um, I just put, pop it out as it, as, as, as it is. So... You go into the top to bait up and then it just closes. Just excuse me, I've got a bit of a tangle. Closes up like that with the hook that hooks round, round the, 
the underside like that. We'll talk about the deploying uh, later. So that's the first pot, the one that you've seen me use the most. Now, the other pot that I've got is this one. I have, I've shown, I think I'm pretty sure I have shown this on, on, uh, on film before. You can see it's, it's slightly different, but again, it is a collapsible pot, collapse down, collapse down to that. So, again, pretty dead easy to carry if you're going to if you're going to carry it along the coast path. This one again weighs about 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 eight pound, and very, this one is a lot easier to put together than the other one because all you do is pull up like that. Then you've got a couple of hooks there and there. Make sure we get it right to keep it closed. And what I do, just as extra security, I usually tie this just to, just in case these clips come undone. Now again, two entrances on this one, two open entrances, about five inch diameter. So big enough for spider crab, big enough for brown crab, and definitely big enough for lobster. Again, open entrance where they walk through and but drop down. But what I've done as a bit of extra security on this one because it's just a round, straight round open entrance. You see there, I've got a peg. It's like a one-way, bit like a things you. I, I used to keep pigeons when I was a kid. Believe it or not, and uh, when you built your pigeon loft, your entrance you had. Um, uh, used to, we used to use um, coat, coat hangers, cut coat hangers, so you, you'd have a one way. They could push through. You had all the wire hanging down. They could push through, but it would flip back closed. What I've done on this for the extra security is that. So you've got they go in, this flips up, closed down. They just just an extra bit to maybe should they should a crab or a lobster try to get out and it cuts down cuts down on the the size of the the opening if you try, if they're trying to get out now on this one I don't know if you can see there's a bar in the middle there in the middle there for baiting it's like a bait bait bar wire where you can you can thread Basically, you can put a whole fish on it in the middle there. But I've got, again, but I've got also got some some cord in there where I, if um, I don't want to use that, just want to tie a bait bag, I can tie it to the centre of the pot. So that's the second one. That's unfortunately is no longer available. I got it from a chap in Scotland who used to make them, but it, they appear to be have gone out of business. Okay, now. One that I'm now using, got it fairly recently, is this pot. Now this is a non-collapsible pot. I wanted to find a non-collapsible pot that I could carry along the coast path and get down onto the rocks, but also carry easy on the kayak. And I managed to find one, and that's this one. And the reason that I was looking for a non suitable non collapsible pot is for the ease that it's all ready ready to go you go you get on a kayak you want to drop it off yeah you, you get there you, and down it goes you don't have to in other words you don't have to put it together now as you can see pro style made really good quality quality netting the bars got the bars protected by the rope just like the pros do. It's got two entrances, five inch rings, again open, we'll talk about that in a moment, open entrances. I'll put some cord in the middle there to be able to tie my, um, tie my fish or my bait bag to. Just here you've got a, a door For baiting and taking out the taking out the uh, the catch. 
Now this one weighs six and a half pound. So what, I, what I've done with this one is so I can add extra weight, get it up a bit. I've put a couple of clips there, just lead clips basically. I've tied a couple of lead clips on one in each corner, opposite corners, so it keeps the balance. So I can just clip some lead on um, to add weight to make sure it stay to make sure it stays stays put okay but talking about this entrance now that there is a drop down on this one but it's not a drop down that's very far so again you could argue that well they can just walk in and walk straight back out again um, that would be possible definitely but again in my uh, way of thinking they're more likely to go round and round and round the bottom looking for a way out than, than work out how to climb up a bit and go out that entrance but it is possible so what I've done added to this pot again I put a, a tent peg what I've used is basically old uh, easy to bend tent pegs there so basically a one-way entrance uh, that falls back down I am hope, hope you can see that tent peg there so this would that would flip up when the crab or lobster walks in and then automatically close back down. So the idea is to cut down on the size of that hole if they do, do try to, to, to get out. And the idea being this can only move so far that way and that way. So again, it's, it would make it a, a bit more difficult for a crab or lobster to get out. But yeah, fan, a, fantastic, a fantastic pot. And I haven't managed to get this on film yet, but hopefully you'll see me use this at some point in the future, either from the shore um, or from the kayak, and uh, hopefully see it, see it catch something. All right, so what we'll talk about now is how I deploy these and secure them. Now, what I've done with every single pot, I've put some cord, see that cord there with a the loop? And the idea being that what I would do is tie some rope. Let's get the rope. So if it's from the shore, just use rope and then tie the rope to there. And the rope is positioned in the corner there. So that when you pull the pot up, you're not pulling it up that way particularly this is more particularly from the kayak if you've got it down in deep water you're not pulling it up that that way you're pulling it up that way just like the pros do so that obviously it can come through the walk it could uh, move it can move through the water easier less resistance in other words so i've got that on so and it's the same on all the pots there's my cord on that one see how that would pull up so it's not pulling up like that, it's pulling up like that. And, I've, and the same on that one. So from the shore, got my rope, tie my rope on, and then down it, down it goes. From the kayak, I use exactly the same as I do with the anchor trolley system. So I've got my SMB reel, my diver's reel, and a buoy. Because if you're putting it out at sea, you've got to have a marker. Shackle. So the shackle goes on there. Over it goes. It's lowered down to the bottom. Depending on the, on, uh, calculate the tide, how much warp you've got to let out to allow for a rise, rising tide. And then the whole lot, this goes over and it sits it sits like that. When it comes to securing these from the shore, if you're dropping it into a, into a rock pool, um, then you could basically you can maybe just find yourself a, uh, find yourself a, a, a boulder or something, um, put on top of it, um, extra weight on top to stop it moving. But what I tend to do is, just excuse me a moment, what I tend to do is one of two things, and I'm doing it from the shore. If I'm at a, a mark where there's lots of boulders, 
loose boulders, what I'll do, will do is, is tie the other end of the rope to a boulder and then try and wedge the boulder somewhere in a crevice or something. Or tie it to a boulder and get some other boulders and, and, and put it on the, on, the, on the rope. So any way I can really to secure the pot just, just in case, just that extra bit, extra bit of security. But sometimes I'll use this, uh, the grapnel anchor which I uh, recently showed, showed me using in, a, in a, a recent video I did, shore crab fishing for spider crab. Use that, and then I t use that if I'm at an area, there's some areas you go to on the rocks, and there's just, there's just no, no loose boulders or nowhere, nowhere easy to, to secure the rope to. So that's what I do. Tie, pop this on and then pop, pop it in a, in a weedy rock pool. Just that e extra security. Okay, so those are the pots. What, what um, I will do now is show you the different ways that I will store these on the kayak. Okay, storing them, carrying them on the kayak. Now, if I'm not using the tank well, if my tank well is clear, then what I do is I pop them on the tank, in the tank well, either, and then secure with some cord. And from my seat, I can, when I'm ready to put the pot together, I can just turn, sit side saddle, turn and very, very easily pull this, this pot onto my lap, put it together and then deploy it. And it would be the same with this one. This, this one go, can go in the, in the tank well a little, little bit, secure it with, secure it with some bungee and carabiner and do it that way and then the other other option if my if my I'm using my tank well which is most likely um, I'm going to be using it it won't be clear but occasionally I go out with it clear most times I've got my dry box there in the tank well so I can't so I can't do that but we'll have a, a look in a moment of how I store it at the back here even when I've got my dry box in. But the other thing I sometimes do is I pop them on the on the bow there. So I've got my fish finder unit here. It goes just behind there and again with the bungee and the carabiners I'll secure it, keep it central so we've got the balance, secure it there. And on this kayak I can uh, very easily just shuffle forward from my seat to here and very very easily reach this and again pull it out get it onto my lap put it together and then deploy it and the same would be for the the other pot the non-collapsible pot if, it, if i can't put it in the tank well i can put it on here and easily reach it but with this one i can actually have it in between my legs there there's enough room on this particular kayak for me to be sitting there I can still paddle out the way I can have it here till I get to the mark one and when I drop it and uh, it's already put together I'd have had it baited up ready to go just be just a matter of clipping on the the cord and the buoy and down it goes but now we'll have a look at another way that I sometimes store, store the pots. Now when I've got my dry box in the tank well, which is usually nearly every, every time that I go out kayak fishing, another thing that I've sometimes done is I put the, these collapsible pots in between my seat and the dry box and just, just clip them on there. Um, and that, that works well. And I've got two pots here, two of the collapsible pots uh, there and um, I've often done it that way and again you just turn side saddle on your seat take the pot out turn put it together on your on your lap and then deploy it so there's another way but one thing I want to say particularly for those of you beginning in kayak fishing if you want if you want to put pots out is please 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 particularly these pots those little rubbishy 
pots you can get off eBay, those little uh, cylinder pots that I looked at first that I said they're only suitable for green crab, they're dead easy. But when you've got these more pro style pots, which are a lot bigger, you need to practice. You need to go out and uh, not very far out and just practice one, how to store them safely and two, how to deploy them safely. So yeah, so if I got them like that, I'll just turn side saddle on my seat, take the pot out, unclip it, take the pot, turn, put it on my lap, put it together and then deploy it. And so that's another way. So there's three different ways that I use to, to store the pots on the kayak. But of course from the shore, you don't have to worry about this. Um, just carry them along, put them together and uh, pop them in a, in a gully somewhere or, or secure them in a rock pool. So that was just a little insight for those of you interested in doing this of the, the pots that I use both from the shore and from the kayak for the, for the crab and lobster fishing. So once again, I hope you found that useful and many, many thanks for watching.